Hello everyone, my name is Doug Hills and this is the Manga Studio Guide. On this episode, I'm updating everyone on how to create a new page in the program. When I made my series of tutorial videos for Smith Micro back in 2012, I did so using version 5.0 of the program. Since then, version updates have completely changed how the new page dialog box looks and behaves, leading to some confusion for more recent users. So, to make sure that we're all on the same page, I'm going to explain how to set up a new page using Manga Studio 5.0.5, and this process can be used by both Manga Studio 5 and 5EX users. Incidentally, you EX users will notice that many of the options you see on your new page dialog box aren't going to appear in this episode. Not to worry though, because I'm going to talk about your exclusive new page options and features on the next episode. So, let's get started. To get a basic understanding on the options that you will have when creating a new page in Manga Studio, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a page that is typically used by American comic book artists, a canvas size of 11 inches by 17 inches, and a print guide that printing companies use when preparing the page for its eventual final size. To get started, I either head up to the main menu and select File, New, or I click the New Page button located here on the command bar. And this brings up the new New Page dialog box. Manga Studio 5.0.5 has introduced three new options, or what I'm calling tabs, to the new page dialog box. Illustration, Comic, and All Settings. The Illustration tab lets you create a canvas without a print guide, while the Comic tab lets you create a print guide with a canvas automatically created around it. For my demonstration, I'm going to use the third tab, All Settings. As its name implies, all the settings that I would use on either the Illustration or Comic tabs are located right here. So, if you wanted to have all of your available options displayed in front of you all at once, this is the tab to use. To get started, the first thing I do is click on the Unit of Measurement drop-down list to set, as you can probably guess, the canvas's unit of measurement. There are several options available, centimeters, millimeters, inches, pixels, and points. Since I'm personally comfortable with inches, I select that. I then select the resolution that I want for my canvas. This is the number of dots that will fit within an inch line. You may have heard it as DPI or PPI. The higher the resolution, the more dots, the smoother the line. When creating for print, the minimum that the resolution should be for a page is 300 dpi. Anything smaller than that will result in lower quality artwork, fuzzier lines, muddier colors, and so on. Beyond that, what you choose depends on the strength of your machine and your personal comfort level. You may find that, for example, while your computer can handle a 1200 dpi canvas, you find that it's harder to draw at that high of a resolution. So I suggest that you experiment with canvases of various resolutions and see which one feels the most comfortable to you. Just make sure to start no lower than 300 dpi. Personally, I like working at 400 dpi. While that's not an option on the list, I can enter in my own value in the resolution text box. Next up, I'm going to check the Manga Draft Settings checkbox and set up my print guide before I set up my canvas. This is going to seem a bit backwards, but it will make sense shortly. The print guide is broken down into three parts. The trim, or what will become the physical edge of your page, the bleed, or the margin of error space for trimming the page down, and the default border, or area that is safest from being trimmed off. If you create artwork that you want to go right to the edge of the page, the bleed area helps guarantee that the final cut doesn't result in some unwanted areas of white showing up should there be any misalignment with the trimmer. Just make sure that you do not have any important artwork or text in this bleed area, as there's no guarantee that it will be there in the final cut. Likewise, if you want to make sure that your important artwork and text doesn't get trimmed off, try to keep them either within or reasonably close to the default border area. I enter in the typical dimensions for an American comic board in their respective text boxes. A trim size of 10 inches by 15 inches, a default border of 9 inches by 14 inches, and a bleed area of 1 quarter inch. If you notice, the canvas has adjusted to fit the print guide, and this is exactly why I set up the guide first. If I set my canvas size, and then created my print guide, the canvas size was going to change to fit the print guide anyway, so it's just easier to set the print guide first. I could just leave the canvas size as it is right now. Technically, the canvas would fit properly on an 11 by 17 sheet of paper should I choose to print it out. But let's say that I want to include information outside of the trim area, like my name, contact information, notes to my inker or colorist, and so on. So I am going to go and I'm changing my canvas size to 11 inches wide by 17 inches high. Next, I set the basic expression color, which creates the default color setting when I add layers to my page. Now, there are three options to choose from. Color, which allows all colors to be used on the layer. Gray, which allows only grayscale colors. And monochrome, which shows only black and or white. With gray and monochrome, I can set whether I want black and white colors displayed, only black, or only white. And I can set the initial dot size for screen tone layers should I choose to add tones to my work later on. I generally like to use color as my base expression, so I'll select that. 
The nice thing is I can always add gray or monochrome layers later on if I need them. I can select the paper color, which is currently white, to practically any color I want by clicking the color and then selecting my new one from the color dialog box that appears. If I want to work on a transparent background, I simply uncheck the paper color checkbox. And finally, if I want to add any templates that I have in my materials to the page, I check the template checkbox, click on the template name, and select any of the compatible templates from the list that appears. By default, I'd only see the framing templates that come with the program. But if I created and registered any custom templates, they would show up here as well. I'll select this basic one panel frame as a template and press OK. And there's my page all set to go. All I need to do at this stage is press OK. But before I do that, I'd like to be able to use this page in the future without having to re-enter all of the settings. So I'm going to save this as a preset by clicking on the Save button. I enter in a name, and I choose any or all of the options I'd like to have saved with the preset, including the page resolution, paper color, basic expression color, and my selected template. I press OK, and then when I click on the preset drop-down list, I can see my newly created preset included with all of the default presets to come with the program. And if I choose later on to get rid of any preset like this one, I simply select it and press the trash button here. Now I'm all set to go, so I press the OK button, and here is my newly created page. It's 11 inches by 17 inches at 400 dpi. I have my print guide all set. I'll add a drawing layer, and you can see it defaults to the color expression mode. And I even have my single frame template that I can adjust and divide later on as needed. And that's all there is to create a new page in Manga Studio 5.0.5. Now before I go, I want to note a couple of things. First, each tab has its own exclusive set of presets. So, if you create a preset on the All Settings tab like I did, it won't show up in the Comic or Illustration tab. And speaking of the Comics tab, relative to All Settings, it's extremely limited. The canvas size is only in millimeters. You can only select a 3 or 5 millimeter bleed. You cannot adjust the canvas size other than by adjusting the print guide size. And you can only select a resolution of 350 dpi or 600 dpi. If you want to have a bit more freedom in how your page is created, I would suggest using the All Settings tab. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this episode of the Manga Studio Guide, which was brought to you by supporters like the ones you see here, as well as this episode's featured supporter, Rodrigo Diaz. If you would like to support the Manga Studio Guide and help me keep these videos free for everyone, forever, you can subscribe for as little as a penny per video through Patreon and get early access to each new episode. Or you can purchase books, rulers, page templates, private lessons, or just throw some money in the tip jar through my online store. Thank you all so much for watching and for your support, and I'll see you next time.